Hola amigos, this is Level 12, and today we are going to be discussing Daisy Bell, the love song turned gruesome TikTok trend. Uh, this video will be taking some sweeping gestures over the history of the song Daisy Bell before jumping forward into the modern TikTok trend. I will leave links below uh, to both the Wikipedia page and the Library of Congress essay about the Daisy Bell song uh, in case you want to know even more of the history of the song. For those of you that n have not heard the Daisy Bell audio, I'll insert a clip of the popular version going around on TikTok here. However, the original song does not sound like that. I'll play a clip of the chorus of how it's supposed to sound here because it is a classical piano piece. Daisy, This, the song sounds like this uh, because it was originally written as a love song by Henry De Decray, uh, I'm sure it's Decray, for Daisy Gravel, Countess of Warwick, um, because she was pretty, I guess. Uh, Henry Decay was also inspired to write the most famous line of the song, A Bicycle Built for Two. Uh, as you can see, it's usually that's the subtitle of it, Daisy Bell, Bicycle Built for Two. After being made to pay an import tax, because he came over from Britain to visit America for a while, and he had to pay an import tax on his single-seater bicycle, and a fellow musician friend remarked, at least it wasn't a bicycle built for two or you would have had to pay double. And Henry was very enamored with the phrase, bicycle built for two, and I can understand why from a lyrical sense it sounds... Like, it just sounds nice, Bicycle Built for Two. And also, the imagination with it of going on a tandem bike ride uh, also sounds very nice. And this all happened in 1892, so the song was very popular. It was performed by popular artists, and it, it was all great. Later, in 1961, the song Daisy Bell would become the first song sung by a computer voice synthesizer, which is where we get the flat, toneless, robotic sound of Daisy Daisy, give me an answer do. That's where the tick, that specific part is where the TikTok audio comes from. And it is only that part because it took hours and hours and hours for the computer to synthesize that quick little chorus bit. <laughs> These computers in the 60s took up entire rooms, let me tell you. But this was a feat, this was a grand feat because it was the first time a computer had synthesized voice. A computer had played music before, but not used a synthesized robotic voice. One can say this is where we get our first, this is like the origins of Siri, if you wanna go that far with it. However, this was such a big impact on the science community that it would later impact science fiction, including 2001 A Space Odyssey, Hal sings it, however Hal sings it in a much nicer-ish voice. If you've ever s heard Hal speak, you know it's it's a little less of the uncanny valley. And it plays in Mysterious Science Theater 3000 at the beginning of the second season. One of the robots is being reprogrammed, and as it's being reprogrammed, it starts to sing Daisy Bell. And Daisy Bell constantly reappears in science fiction and eerie type of media because of how strange the robotic voice sounds to us today, despite its origins. I'm not sure when or how the TikTok trend came to be. I just know that it has taken the audio to display some pretty tragic and creepy events. A lot of the TikToks start with either a creepy image or the creator looking shocked slash disgusted with text saying images with creepy backstories or images taken right before disaster. Some of these are harmless. Like some of these are like just weird old Disney animatronics or old creepypasta images that the youth don't remember because creepypasta is not popular anymore. While others, in my opinion, are a lot worse because they're of more recent events. 
I've seen at least three separate TikToks showing the Challenger exploding. If you don't know what the Challenger was, it was a spaceship that exploded like before it even broke the atmosphere and the entire crew died and it's very tragic. Uh, some events show people boarding the ship right before it took off and then the next image is the ship exploding and it feel it feels very weird to me to see those juxtaposed together for TikTok clout. Uh, others show aerial images of Jonestown, uh, one suggesting even the bodies look like piles of garbage. If you don't know what Jonestown was, there was a man named Jim Jones that was a cult leader and took underprivileged people, you know, people of color, people in poverty, um, people in interracial marriages, uh, families with young children, uh, took them to a cult-like town in Latin America, and, um, he was not a great guy, he was kind of violent, uh, he was also, um, a child molester, and instead of having the U.S. government bring them all back, he killed them all in a massacre. Uh, if you've ever heard the phrase, drink the Kool-Aid, it comes from that, because they forced the young children to drink Kool-Aid laced with arsenic and other things to kill people very quickly. And if you refused, you were shot. So, that's Jonestown, and that's what someone compared dead bodies to garbage, because if you've ever seen the aerial images, it's just bodies strewn all over the place. It's very tragic, and I hate how, um... The memory of the people that just wanted to get out of America looking for a better life because they were impoverished and because they were people of color and because they were in love with someone who was not their race. As you can see, I'm very upset. Um, anyways, uh, others show pictures of hikers standing at very, like, scenic points. And then just the tiny pixel of a background, there's the dead body of another hiker who had been missing for months or weeks or what have you. And yes, the images themselves are kind of interesting, but they give no context for it. And it's just, it's a little annoying. And the one that makes me the most upset is... Um, if y'all are old enough to remember the Snapchat uh, kidnapping slash murder of the case of Abby Williams and Libby German, uh, that case is extremely recent uh, because I can remember it very well. Uh, they show images from that, giving no context other than showing the two images of the girls having fun on the bridge and then the one image we have of their, uh, of their murderer. Uh, and they give no context for it. It is all for TikTok clout. And some of you may be asking, why am I so pressed about this? There's tons of videos concerning all these things, especially Jonestown and the Challenger exploding. I've watched a movie based off Jonestown. I've watched multiple documentaries of Jonestown. Why do these TikToks bother me? You may be asking. And well, dear viewer, it's because these quick, 15 second videos aren't spreading any real information about these events. Instead, they're using these events as shock horror to gain clicks and views, which is disgusting. Do people make money off videos discussing Jonestown, the Challenger exploding, and other true crime events? Yes, sometimes, if their videos aren't demonetized. Do they also give full scope of the case? and give due credit to news outlets and try their best to help the families and talk about the victims in a respectful manner and not just for clout? Yes, they also do that. Eleanor Neal is one of those people. Brooke McKenna is one of those people. Any true crime YouTuber, most of them, give due credit to the victims and their families and give disclaimers that they are not just doing this for the clout. It's quite annoying to see this TikTok trend go around. Now, dear viewer, imagine someone you loved died in a tragic event. Would you be more upset at a 15 minute video explaining what happened and possibly providing links to resources to help you or to help if it's a cold case to help give tips to help find the killer or the killers or what have you? Or 
a 15 second video with the caption reading, some people reported seeing body parts fall from the air. That was a real caption on a video showing the challenger exploding. And I'll let you decide what your answer is on that one. So that's the history of the Daisy Bell song and this TikTok trend. Uh, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more random fandom things. Ciao, chicos.